just got this in. So this is the High Wonder Leon Soul X Arm fully programmable robotic arm here and we've got multiple different servos here with feedback and status it contains six different servos and each of the servos can give you data such as temperature position voltage um, working status we've also got quality servos here they're supposed to be rated for up to one month of continuous usage at least so we've got some quality servos here, a good build quality. We've got a full metal construction here for the unit and it's got a nice clean paint job. So uh, I, I don't wanna talk too much. I think I want you guys to see how this thing works because it's really, really cool. We've got uh, multiple different ways to control it. We've got an RC controller, we've got an app, We've got the computer programmable options. We've got a wireless mouse. We've got a lot to go over with this thing. So let's just dive right into it. The first and my favorite method for controlling the arm is with this wireless remote controller. Now this remote controller resembles a PlayStation remote. It is not a PS remote. It is just a similar mold and design and the remote only works with the X arm. So each individual button and there's 12 of them on here that you can use to access the action groups. Now, what is an action group? An action group is an individual set of commands or movements programmed on the controller that the remote or the receiver here knows to access when you press a button. So I'm gonna show you the first one that I have programmed on this button, and it is a command that tells the arm to move forward, grip this, and move it over here. And it may work, hopefully, might have to help it along here a little bit, but it should hopefully work. I'm gonna help, I'm helping a little bit there because sometimes it misses the object. But as you can see, that's it. It just moved that thing. Now I'm gonna move the quad back over here and we're gonna have it grip the item. So with this action group here that I have programmed on the X, instead of it coming over here, it's gonna come over here and try to grab it from there. I'm gonna try to help it along a little bit here. And there we go, see, it just moved and grabbed it from that location. And that's what you can do with these action groups. Instead of moving the arm yourself, the action groups make an easy way to set it so you can set an item down or put an item in the arm's hand and it just does all the work for you with the groups. The second method of control is to put it into single servo mode. So to get into single servo mode, we're gonna press both the start and select buttons at the same time. And now we can move each individual servo on our own with the directional buttons, just as you'd expect. Move it backward, forward, left to right. I can actually reach out and grab this quad now. So just to demonstrate the controller fully, I can open and close the claw with these buttons here, the left and right two buttons. I can change the claw's angle using, again, using the buttons. So the claw, you've got it on the top. You've got a full range of motion for this servo with the directional buttons. If you want the arm to go forward or backward, you're gonna use these up and down buttons here. If you want this servo to move, the one that's attached to the arm here to get this, you use these buttons here. All right, so now let's do this. I'm gonna actually open the claw. I'm gonna sort of adjust the servo here. Now that's a little too much. All right, now I've brought it closer to me and I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it. Oh, it's kind of pushing up. And there we go, I've got a little drone and I can move it around and that's it. If I wanna let go of it, I can literally just drop it. So that's it, I really love how easy the controller is to get into. Anybody can pick this up, a kid, an adult, and they can start using the remote and the controller to access all six of these servos, nice and easy. And because of the pre-programmed commands, you can really get into that as well. To get back to that menu, you just do, and now we're back into the uh, action group mode. 
So the second method that you could use to control the X-Arm is via the iOS and Android app, and I have the X-Arm application downloaded to my iPad Mini 4. Now make sure that you have Bluetooth turned on because that's how it communicates with the, with the controller. I'm gonna go ahead and open the app, turn on the X-Arm, and it should be pretty easy to connect to. We're gonna click on My X Arm and you're gonna see a list of Bluetooth devices. It's searching for them. It and there we go, it sees the X Arm. And I see two X Arms here, so that's kind of weird, but that's okay. I'm just gonna tap one of them. And pretty much immediately, you're gonna know if you're a connector or not. Let's go ahead and try one of the servos here. Yep, so I'm able to move the servo for the claw with my hand here. Now I kind of found that the app is rather limited. You can change the individual servos, obviously. But I noticed that in, if I click on custom, yes, I can add some custom actions, but I don't seem to be able to access the individual action groups that I've created. So if you use the app, yes, you get the basic um, individual servos, but there's really no way it appears to access the action groups. Although it's really good, this is another nice method for just quickly getting into it and using it and, and demoing it. So yes, there is the app that you can use. And again, it's available for both iOS and Android. Last but not least is the X-Arm Starter app for PC. Now in this app, you can do a lot of different things from both programming it to loading the action groups, as well as checking yourself during the build process. So first let's go over some of the servo control. Now, when you first get it, all the servos are set to 500 and that's the neutral state for them. Now, here's where it can come in handy when it comes to the building process. What you can do is, you can check to make sure that the servos are actually moving in the direction that they should. Such as, when you move the serv a servo forward, it should move forward. When you move it left, it should move left. When you move it right, it should move right. Another way to use this application to see that you've completed the building process correctly is to use the reset servo button. I'm going to go ahead and click it, and then the arm should fully stand on end. You see that? It should stand straight up. There shouldn't be any horizontal or movement. It should be straight up vertically like that. That means that you've got, pretty much you've got all the servos in order as they should be. The next important detail to note is the deviation for the servos. Now, when you put this together, it may not be completely perfect, and that is what the deviation for. This is what lets you ensure that the servos are all straight. So when you press that reset servo button and it's standing up on end, all the servos should be completely straight. But if you need to adjust the alignment of them, make sure the servos are at 500, all of them need to be at 500, and then adjust the way what you see uh, on the arm to make sure that it is actually straight at 500 and that's what the little sliders below each thing are. Now be very careful adjusting this because you don't want to mess this up too much. If you do you can reset everything back to default but the sliders for deviation are very important during that build process. Now finally, and last but not least, is the action groups. Now this is what we were talking about earlier that allow the remote controller to function and access those pre-programmed action groups. So when you get the arm, you get access to what are called the action files. Now I'm gonna open file number 12, and as you can see, our action menu here has been populated with all these different actions. Now, these are what the individual servos do and what the values of the servos get set to after each and every action. Now I'm gonna run this sequence right now using the play button. And that was one of the sequences that we used before to grab the little drone and put it over there. And then the arm comes back. You can change any of the aspects of this. Like let's say we wanted the arm grip to be a little stronger, right? So we're gonna look for servo number one, okay? Cause that's the arm, that's the, uh, the claw here. And we want that claw grip to be a little stronger when it comes down. So like we're gonna change that from 159, we're gonna change that to say 50, okay? And that should actually tighten the arms. We were having a little bit of trouble 
gripping that thing before, right? And again, that should make it a little tighter and should make it a little easier. And you can kind of adjust that as you go. Now, if you want to save or program the action file to a button on the controller, for example, action group number 12, like let's say we want to program it to one of these buttons up here. We can go ahead and choose action group 12. We can download the action to the controller and that's it. When you see download success, that means that you have successfully downloaded this sequence of actions to the controller for the ARM. The XARM Starter 2.5 app is your friend for all of your programming needs as well as uh, build debugging and for accessing the action groups. Now you're probably wondering, what can you actually do with this thing? And that's a good question because this unit does not come cheap. You're gonna pay anywhere from 150 to $200 for this. So if you're buying it, you are not just doing it to screw around with grabbing little objects. The aim for this product is a teaching item. It's to help get kids, it's for students and teachers alike to demonstrate programming and get kids feet wet with general robotics and even adults to understand that you know when you adjust that value on the computer the arm is going to close in more when you increase it it's going to expand out and it, it sort of gets you into the understanding of programming a servo digitally and how all these various electronic components interact. And I think that the X-Arm does a really good job of doing that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review of the High Wonder X-Arm fully programmable robotic arm here. If you guys have any questions for me or comments, please leave them down below. If you've got any issues with the build process or you wanna know more about the arm, I'll do my best to try to answer those questions for you. Um, if you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, well, you know where that button is. And uh, as for me, I guess I hope you guys have a great day and I'm gonna go do some grabbing.